G'day everyone. Uh, it's been a few months since I've done a video because I haven't been building or collecting anything, but uh, I have received these three uh, 43rd scale uh, supercars in the last few weeks, so I thought I'd uh, do a bit of a review on them. Um, they're all in really limited numbers. For example, this Tim Slade Freightliner car, there's only 102 pieces of it made, so uh, really difficult to uh, to find uh, at retail, as I imagine. Um, and just the, the manufacturers now are building to pre-order. So uh, I can understand their reasoning. They don't want to manufacture pieces that uh, they then might, that might turn into dead stock and sit around for six, 12 months or more uh, in their warehouses. But um, by building to just pre-order numbers, I think they're missing out on quite a market because uh, with these, for example, they all sold out. Uh, in the case of some Nissans that I did miss out on, they were gone from the Apex website within an hour of going on sale. So there is clear capacity to manufacture more items, uh, bigger numbers than what they're, they're currently doing. But anyway, they see that if it's not on pre-order, they're not really uh, building that much more. So I'll just have to keep an eye out on things. I, I don't personally like to do pre-orders because uh, I'm, I'm worried about falling into the trap of uh, when a manufacturer announces a whole bunch of models, um, if you're going to pre-order them all and then they all got made, um, can't afford that. But uh, so if you put pre-orders in for the ones that you do want and then they don't get made, so then you uh, think, well, okay, I'll spend that money that I'm not spending on a model that wasn't made. I'll go and spend it on one of them when it was, but they've only been built to pre-order. You're likely to miss out anyway. So what's the point of doing the pre-order in the first, first place? So anyway, that's my opinion on it, whether that be right or wrong. Uh, so let's have a closer look at these. Firstly, we've got uh, Tim Slade's Freightliner-sponsored car from the 2019 season. Uh, this is how the car ran at the, um, the Adelaide 500 of that year, uh, made by Bianti, 43rd scale diecast. Um, it's a sealed body, no opening parts on these 43rd scale uh, models, but you can see inside there is detail, there's um, roll cage and seat and controls and all of that sort of stuff on the um, inside the model, a bit hard to see in there with the uh, the camera and the reflections and so on. Uh, but this is sort of standard thing with Bianti, these are the, the new uh, ZB Commodore supercars that, they've, uh, that they're doing. Uh, this model has been um, painted in black and really nice glossy finish on it. When you get to the decals, you can see there on the roof, uh, that's all the, all the decal. All the yellow on this is decal. There's no no, no mask sprays on it, and uh, it's not as smooth as what the uh, the actual paint finish is. Okay, but uh, this is from Adelaide, so it's got the uh, the paint uh, the paint the fuel filler here on the the right hand side, which is how the pit stops were. Uh, the pit lane is arranged at that venue. The uh, idea of putting all the various aerials and communication domes for the TV, that sort of thing on the cars. Little tiny photo etch latches on both the bonnet and on the on the boot. Uh, we've got an issue here with the side skirts. Uh, this has been an issue with the previous Commodores as well where the side skirts just haven't been fitted correctly when the model's been produced so um, unfortunately it looks like that, that uh, has been carried over to the ZB casting. Uh, you can see inside the boot there that the the, um, the fuel line coming in from the right hand side and uh, going into the um, into the fuel tank that's at the back of the basically where the back seat is on these cars. But uh, yeah, overall uh, generally a, um, a pretty good model. Side skirts fitted correctly on this side. Good to see. The uh, the Freightliner decal is pixelated. That's just the way that they're. Uh, man doing the, the shading, the gradient shade on that by the look of it. But overall, yep, pretty good model for the uh, the Tim Slade Freightliner car from 2019. Uh, next up is uh, Simona Di Silvestro's Nissan Ultima from the 2018 season. Again, this looks like it's modelled from the Adelaide 500, according to the, uh, the event decal above the Harvey Norman. Uh, this is 43rd scale diecast from Apex. Uh, like the Bianti, it's a closed model uh, with interior and um, it's got a little bit of negative camber on the wheels as well, which is a, which is a good thing. It helps with the, the overall stance of the model, uh, unlike the classic collectibles, which are far cheaper with no interior and uh, no camber, but anyway. 
Uh, this is, uh, I think it was $88 for this, plus whatever the shipping was. So it's a bit more expensive than what the Beantis were, which were around the $70 mark. So they're expensive models, but uh, the quality on them is, uh, is generally pretty good. Uh, this has also got uh, little photo etch buckles on the, or latches I should say, for the bonnet and the, and the boot. The big uh, Ultima grille. Uh, the model's been painted in black, and then all of the red and the white is decal, so uh, they must be using some sort of a really stretchy material to get it to con uh, conform to all of these contours and crevices in the, in the casting. Uh, and you can see here on the roof, for example, the paint is, uh, is really good, nice and glossy, but when it comes to the decal, it's a bit of a rough, rough texture, so uh, that's not so good when you're looking at it in detail. It's got the chrome trim around the windows that the uh, the real car had and also some chrome decal there as well on the on the uh, the, the quarter panel there but um, again that's decal it's not really a great finish on on that compared to for example the uh, the chrome plating on the on the boot here uh, again got the uh, there's a vent at the top aerials windscreen wiper mirrors chromed mirrors etc so all of the things that you would expect on a 43rd scale model of the uh, of the modern era. Only 120 pieces of this uh, were released. Um, there were some other uh, Rick Kelly Castrol cars, but uh, and I was wanting to get those, but um, by the time I got onto the website, uh, they're all gone. So they need to be making. They can sell a few more of these. But overall, pretty good model uh, and and fairly unique too, um, with with uh, Simona's uh, run in the in the supercars series. And finally, Mark Winterbottom's uh, 2019 ZB Commodore, um, made by Bianti. So uh, all the quality and every, and features and everything are much the same as on the Slade car. Um, this is uh, painted in the blue, and all of the yellow is decal except for the side skirts. Now, depending on the light, those side skirts often look quite a bit different. They've been painted, whereas all of the rest of the yellow is uh, is decal. But we can also see here um, fitment issues of the side skirt. All right? It's just not been fitted properly from the factory. So we've got a bit of a glue stain on the, the front above the headlight there as well. That might come off with a bit of cleanup. Um, the uh, aerials and camera communications, TV communications, on the, on the roof. Um, so again, overall, a, a pretty good model. Some camber on it there. Got some fitment issues with the side skirt on the right-hand side as well. Um, both Bianti and Apex are putting silver rims on these, which is you know, more or less correct. But in real life, these rims are um, are alloy, machined alloy. So I think they should be shinier. Not a full chrome plating, but certainly some sort of a high gloss would be uh, a good thing, a good move for the. Um, for the rims, but overall pretty good model. Maybe it could be a little lower on the ride height, but not a not a big issue. Uh, also, just on the Nissan, while I've got it there, um, check out. They've got the markings on the rim, on the edges of the rim, the branding. So that's an extra feature and some ventilation detail on the discs. So a little bit more detail there on the Apex compared to the uh, the, the anti brand. Anyway, so that's it for the moment. Uh, we'll see what might turn up in the post over the next month. Cheers.